Yes, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another bonus episode of Players World. Today, we have a world exclusive of Bagsy's V3 GTR. So we're here with Bagsy and his third version of the GTR. Um, so did you want to talk to us about the build, the history of the build and how we've got to this third version? It all started uh, back end of 2016. We got the opportunity to um, be in a video project that Monster Energy was making called Basel Drift 2. Mm -hmm. um, we quickly found out that the other driver in the video besides myself was going to be Daigo Saito from Japan. Yeah. And at that time he was driving uh, the Liberty Walk Lamborghini. Yeah. And we knew that we wanted to try and make this video amazing. And at the time I was still driving my Nissan S13, which is a great little car, but didn't stand up to what, you know, what was going to be this amazing video and against this Lamborghini. So um, we came up with the idea um, with our partners to build a better car. And we started looking around for what vehicles we could find that we felt would work. And I realized that I really wanted to build a Nissan GTR, but obviously, you know, that's a, it's a big, yeah. big, massive project. Um, we managed to find one and with the help of Monster and ST Suspension and the rest of our partners, we were able to put the project together. Um, it took about six or seven months for this whole thing to actually, you know, become a reality. But I think it was February, two th February 2017, the Nissan GTR was delivered to the workshop and we had just under three months at that point to build it from a fully road going, beautiful import Nissan GTR mm -hmm. with like 20,000 kilometers on the, on the clocks. It was immaculate, it was beautiful. The car originally was a development car uh, for ST suspension oh, okay, okay. and they had had it from new to build obviously their uh, suspension kits for the Nissan GTR platform back in 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we managed to get the car from them and uh, we set about building it into a Nissan GTR drift car. The original plan uh, was to use the engine that came in the GTR, mm. which is the uh, VR38 engine. Yeah. It's a V6 um, engine. It's, it's an amazing piece of kit, um, but we wanted to tune it from around 580 horsepower, which it was when we got it, to near a, a thousand. But at that time, in that time frame that we had, all the parts that we needed to try and make it safe at around 1,000 horsepower yeah. just weren't available. Okay. You know, we needed a new crankshaft, we needed pistons, we needed rods, we needed new turbos, manifolds, inlet manifolds, new intercooler setups. Like It was just a huge, great big um, list of parts that we needed to get from Japan and America. And, you know, we just weren't able in, in that time frame to just bring that all together and then build the engine. Yeah and get it all done. So we went to a platform that we are quite familiar with, which is V8s. So we got a, a Chevrolet LSX engine, 7.4 litre, and we strapped a huge, great big Garrett turbo on the front of it. Yeah. And we knew that we could lower the compression slightly and stick a load of boost into it, and it would make well over a thousand horsepower quite reliably, quite easily. Um, we put a Quaif 69G six-speed sequential gearbox on the back of it. Uh, Winters and sicky quick change rear end. And uh, there we had our platform for the build. Like that was the that was the main parts of it. We then reached out to Liberty Walk in Japan, Kato and Toshi, and uh, explained the project to them. And they were very excited because obviously the Lamborghini yeah. was already, uh, Lamborghini already had a Liberty, a Liberty Walk, Walk kit. body, yeah, body yeah. kit on it. So it was uh, an easy sell to them to say, well, why not have two of our two cars in this video yeah. with our kits on it? So we were lucky that they then sent us the V1 Liberty Walk Nissan GTR body kit. And uh, that's kind of how the project started. We had the body kit, we had the platform for the engine, the gearbox and all the hardware. Rotoform sent us out uh, a lot, you know, an amazing set of wheels. And yeah, we just started getting on with the build. It was three months of hell. You know, it was it was seriously hard work. Like I was coordinating parts and trying to make sure everything was turning up at t in the right times and dealing with customs and, mm. you know, Japan, America, um, parts from all over England and Europe. 
and uh, the boys did an amazing job to get it done in time. We was literally still putting stickers on the car the morning of the filming, like trying to okay. finish everything. But yeah, we got through the filming. The car was messing around the whole time. It was just, yeah, it was a, it was a very, very, yeah, very, very tough period of time, but we got it done. And then after that, we've, you know, we took it through a couple of different versions. About a year after that, we changed it to the V2 body kit. Yeah. We changed the uh, wrap. We did, you know, we changed the color of the wheels, switched it up a little bit, but we only kind of just, you know, we didn't really rebuild the car. We just kind of adapted it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, December time, 2020, I decided to basically rebuild the car. You know, we wanted to take it back to the beginning and turn it into something brand new again you know it needed it had four lot it had four years at this point mm -hmm. of uh lots of shows it had been to america it'd been to all around europe doing different various things um you know it, it started to see a bit of wear and tear so we decided to strip it strip it back and fully rebuild it liberty walk sent us out this insane beautiful v3 uh liberty walk gtr body kit uh we rebuilt the engine um yeah we had it in the dyno last week it made even more power than it had before however we have got two settings now we've got like the old setting and the new setting so i can switch between the okay, two because okay. the old setting was fairly lively you know it was fairly full on yeah. but now this the new power that we've got in it is even more scary i should imagine i haven't yet driven it so i don't really know but <laughs> it made some good power in the dyno so i'm looking forward to getting behind the wheel in a couple of days time at goodwood festival speed Yes, so you touch on that. Before we get on to where we're going with the Goodwood Festival Speed in a couple of days time, which is where you're going to unveil the car and yeah. this new look, let's talk a little bit about that power. Roughly, what, what was the old power and what's roughly the new power? So roughly, when, well, when we tuned it originally, we made uh, on a high boost, we made about 1200 horsepower, uh, but we backed it off to around 1000 okay. just to run it safe. Mm -hmm. So uh, where it sits right now, uh, it's a, it's on low boost right now, it's about 900 horsepower. On high boost, it's uh, about 1100 horsepower. So, but it will do more, like it would easily do maybe 1300 horsepower, yeah. but if we wanted to turn the boost up even more, but in reality, there's, you know, when you start talking about these sorts of numbers, there, there isn't a huge amount of, there isn't a huge amount to be achieved when yeah. you start jumping up, you know, mm -hmm. there's just more heat management, there's more, uh, you know, reliability issues. Like, yeah. and this car is going to do four days of festival. I really, really want it to be, you know, yeah, perfect course, yeah. through the whole day, every day. We're going to do a load of shows coming up into this, you know, this year and the mm -hmm. rest of the summer. So yeah, maybe once we've done a few more shows and we, you know, we can start fiddling with it a little bit more, but right now, yeah. It's, I it's, mean, that's still impressive having between 900 and 1100. I don't think anybody will say that that's rookie numbers. No. That's some big numbers from that but it's big a, old V8. It was surprising, you know, like we've, we've just rebuilt the engine. We put brand new camshaft, crank rods, all that sort of stuff. Brand new uh, bottom end block from mm -hmm. America just came in a couple of uh, weeks ago. It made it quite easily on the dyno. Like yeah. it surprised me how, you know, how we've, you know, we didn't have to spend a lot of time really tuning it to achieve those sorts of numbers. You know, you can do it with, you know, a big old turbo and yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. 7.4 liter engine, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, of course. It's, yeah, it's got plenty of grunt. Um, yeah. And obviously that power matches obviously the looks. Um, you said the V3 from Liberty Walk, guys. How do you like this compared to the previous kits that you've had on the car? It's a difficult one because I really, really loved the V1 kit. Like I felt it was, it was really, really nice. It was, it was sort of stealthy, subtle, but aggressive. Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. still looked like a GTR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. V2, I feel like it stepped up a little bit from there again. It got a bit wider. Uh, the, you know, like the body shape sort of changed a bit. And it wasn't until we got the kit on and we put the wrap on. And when I started seeing photos pop out on the internet, the photographers were, yeah. were sharing and stuff that I really started to fall in love with it. You know. It, I still liked the V1 so much that I felt like I had to almost like learn to love the V2. Yeah, okay, it right. wasn't like I was naturally suddenly drawn to it. I I loved the V1 so much and I got used to it for so long that mm. the second the V2 came along, I, was, I, I wasn't I was sure if I preferred the V1 or the V2, but as I said, after seeing the photos starting to come out and you know the amount of attention it was getting, I realized that the V2 was yeah, it was it was that it was better. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. And again, I guess the same with the V3. But 
I think it's slightly different with the V3 because we've gone back to a bit more stealthy looking. You know, we've tried to take some of the colors out of the car and just go back to black. And we've got some yellow, obviously, and the Monster Energy green. But, you know, it's this kit, I think, is, is, is three or four jumps again because this has got so much wider. We're having to run bigger spaces on the back now. Bigger, some more spaces on the front just to like meet the body shape. Yeah, yeah. it's so much wider. Um, but I really, really like the body lines. I really love the front bumper. Like the front end for me is probably the fav my favorite part of the whole kit. Um, however, it doesn't really look that much like a Nissan GTR anymore to me. It's like something else now. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's almost like the Batmobile to a certain degree. You know, it's it's definitely changed the whole look of the car. You know, uh, yeah, we changed the evolved the the look as you say. It's no. I agree with you, I think, and which is why I think I prefer this to the V1 because yeah. I feel like the V1 was a GTR. Yeah, yeah. Well, the V1... Whereas the, this looks like, like an aggressive race car, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know... It, the V1 and the V2 both had the same bonnet. Mm -hmm. So when we got the Nissan GTR, it came with a carbon bonnet on it and we kept that carbon bonnet on the kit, on the car, mm -hmm. although the V... Uh, the V1 and V2 both came with bonnet replacements. We actually kept the, the carbon bonnet that came with the Nissan GTR when we actually just got it delivered. So, and that bonnet looked like very much like a Nissan GTR bonnet. Yeah. But obviously with this kit, we couldn't not use the bonnet that Liberty Walk supplied us. So we used, the, we used this bonnet, which again, changed massively the front end look of the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. So, um, which is why I think I've, I've fell, fallen in love with it. And Fleet Livery uh, Solutions in Lower Stuff have done an insane job with the with the livery. Um, I really do like it, like the colours and the way they've you know the way they've done all the graphics and the uh, you know partner logos and stuff. I think it all really works together. So yeah, I think so. I think it looks really aggressive. Like you say, you've toned it down, gone back to just like black with like stealthy camo vibes. Um, and also, I'm sure Jay will really appreciate that you've taken after him and gone with the yellow headlights. Um, it's something I know he's a big inspiration to you, so I'm <laughs> sure Jay will appreciate that. Um, I'm not sure, how, how long has he had yellow headlights on his Porsche for? <laughs> so I want to find out, because I had yellow headlights on the van. Okay. So I don't know which one of us. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to, uh, no. Rick will have to, yeah, uh, we'll have to look back. Know. But anyway, yeah, I, no, I definitely saw Jay's Porsche headlights and I thought, no, that's where it's at. Yeah, that's, that uh, is where it's at. No, it really, it really ties it in. Like all jokes aside, it really ties it in. It really works. Something else that really ties it in is the wheels, the finish to the wheels. Yeah. I think, um, I think they look great in the all black with just the yellow accents of the bolts. I think that, you know, they really tie the kit together and the wheels together. Because before you've had what? The green centers. Yeah, and then so we you had the grey centers. Yeah, so originally when the wheels came over from Rotoform, originally they were green centers mm -hmm. with the black barrels. Um, then we changed it up to obviously the grey, and now we're you know we're at black. Man, I, I love the love the new look of the car. I'm sure the guys will you know let us know in the comments what you think of the new look. Where you prefer V1, V2, V3? Uh, what you think of the new look of the rotor forms? What you think of yellow headlights? Um, I personally think this is my favourite incarnation of the car. I think it looks great. It looks amazing. Seeing it outside, like here in the warehouse, it looks against nothing. It looks not normal, but it's not as wild as it looks outside. It's almost a little bit normal when you kind of take into consideration we're parked up next to JP's Golf, <laughs> yeah. or you know, or yeah. uh, or an Evo over there. Yeah, uh, or Cosworth, is that J, uh, yeah. Jay's fucking 190 yeah, Mercedes? Yeah. You know, so it's almost normal for here at Wheel Pros. Exactly, but once uh, you see it outside against normal cars or yeah. whatever, you start realizing like how wild it looks. And for me, I, I, I love the wing, I love the bonnet, I love the really aggressive look of it i think um and obviously it looks like it goes it's gonna go like it looks so i'm uh, really Fingers excited crossed. to see it and good luck at festival of speed this weekend you're doing practice thursday yeah so practice thursday and then we've got two uh two runs up the hill friday two runs saturday and two on sunday so yeah i'm looking forward to getting back to goodwood again yeah it was only a few weeks ago that we was obviously yeah. at players classic it feels like probably Players Classic was the last good night's sleep that I had. Since then, it's been pretty full on getting this thing ready, but I'm really pleased that we're at this stage now. A few little jobs still left to do on it in the morning, and then we load up and we're heading over to Goodwood again for the weekend, or this week's Goodwood Festival Speed. Perfect, man. Well, thank you very much for talking to us uh, 
about the car and good luck this weekend, man. All the best. Appreciate it. Thank Cheers, you, man. man. Yeah, so that's been uh, Baxi's uh, GTR V3 build. Let us know what you think in the comments. What's your favorite V1, V2, V3? Make sure you check him out throughout the whole weekend on ITV4. Take it easy. Peace. <laughs>